I wanted to stay out of all this, if I'm being honest. But the more information that comes out, I got to save my peace. So more information generally means more clarity. But in this case, it's provided less clarity and more questions. So we're not going to be talking about SSDs, caching, or anything else in this video. We are going to be focusing on hard drives. So not all of this is bad, but some of it is really bad. And these are the five biggest takeaways from mostly leaks, and I stress leaks because this can change tomorrow. And a lot of this information comes from Robbie over at NAS Compares. So I'll link a few of his videos below and a few of his articles. So keep in mind, this is all leaks. Now, if I told you that only Synology hard drives were approved for all 25 series and up plus devices, would you have a problem with it? If I told you that all third-party drives that you should use in a NAS, meaning CMR drives, are approved, would you have a problem with it? Keep those two questions in mind as we go through this, and we're going to circle back to that at the end. Now, this is very different from leaks than what it currently is, meaning that the way that it currently works, as far as I know, is you put in to an enterprise NAS a unsupported third-party drive, and you will get a warning that you shouldn't use the drive in the NAS, but it still works as expected. If the leaks are true, in 25 series and up NAS devices, plus NAS devices, not the J or value series, you will not be able to create a storage pool or even initialize the system. Now, this doesn't bother me as much as you probably think it bothers me. It's actually everything else that bothers me, and here's why. You shouldn't be using SMR drives with RAID. And if this stops people from doing that and reaching out to Synology for support, I'm completely fine with that because we have examples of that everywhere around us. If you own a car and you need to put new tires on that car, there's a size that you need to purchase that fits that car. You can't put monster truck tires on a car. So if Synology is saying that they're done supporting all types of hard drives because they're getting a ton of support requests for, we'll say, desktop grade drives, I'm fine with that. Seriously, I got no problem with that. The problem comes when you shift from type of drive to brand of drive. In this case, as of right now, Synology is saying that the same size tires, same type, same everything from a different manufacturer cannot be used on the car, not because they won't work, but because they haven't certified it. Now, it turns from a performance and reliability change to a lockout, and that's the problem. Which then leads us to the next point, which is that Synology doesn't manufacture hard drives. So I spoke with a good friend of mine, Avi at Tech Me Out. He has a YouTube channel. I highly suggest that you check it out and subscribe to him. But he was dead on in his analysis. Synology doesn't manufacture hard drives. They have a relationship with a hard drive manufacturer and they're just relabeled drives. In this case, we have a reason to believe that they are Toshiba drives. So if you can buy the same exact hard drive from Toshiba, put it in the NAS and it doesn't work, what is Synology doing from a firmware perspective that improves their drives? They're using regular RAID, they're using the BTRFS file system, so it has nothing to do with that. So with this in mind, the very first drives that should be on that compatibility list should be Toshiba drives or whatever reskin versions they're using because they're the same thing minus some firmware, possibly. Now let's get back to the firmware. If firmware is the reason they need to certify the drives, the solution to that problem is to make sure that you can easily update the firmware in DSM. That would solve the problem. If outdated firmware is the reason for the increased support requests. But if they're saying that they have special baked in firmware into their third party drives, why would a third party drive ever hit those requirements? But we'll talk more about that in a second. Which then brings us to the next point, which is that migrating from an existing device will work and is approved, which just leads to so many questions and can be picked apart in so many different ways. First, 
How is Synology going to do this? Is it going to be locked? Meaning one Synology device has an upgrade key that is linked to another Synology device, the new Synology device. If not, all this is doing is opening up an entire black market where people will sell new drives that are configured with an older Synology device to get around the ban, which will probably hurt reliability in the long run, which is what they're trying to solve. Next, what happens to people like me who will be downsizing? Going from five drives to four. That wouldn't be a migration. So what is it? Is it approved or is it not approved? Is it approved if you are upgrading to a new NAS device that is at least the same size or larger than the current NAS device you have? Or will a special key exist that will allow you to upgrade from any Synology device to a new Synology device if you use one of their drives? Like, there's just so many questions around it. So right now, the way that I read that is that you have to purchase a new Synology device that is at least the same size or larger than your current storage pool. That's the way that I understand that. Now, the only bright spot is that some third-party drives are expected to be approved after they are tested for unofficially over 7,000 hours. So let's dissect this a little bit. This can't be endurance testing because almost every single drive would still be in its warranty period and 7,000 hours equates to 291 days. So 291 days for a NAS hard drive is nothing. And every single new NAS hard drive you buy should still be within the warranty period after 291 days. So it is not endurance testing. So that probably means that they're testing in batches of 10 or more. So I would assume it's 7,000 hours in total across drives. So if they're testing in batches of 10, that would be 240 hours per day. And then it would be a few weeks because if it's nine or 10 months to test a new drive, this is gonna be a long and drawn out process. So with that in mind, what can they be testing? This goes back to the type of drive being the important part and not the brand of drive. Because if being a CMR drive with a specific speed, cache size, and let's say workload rate isn't the problem and firmware is the problem, the latest firmware they test today might not be the same firmware tomorrow. So now are we saying that third-party drives with specific firmware versions are approved? That would at least make sense, but I can't imagine doing that because that would be a nightmare to manage. So Synology is probably taking this path because in general, enterprises don't care about having to use Synology drives. In true enterprise environments, drives are generally not reused. Everything has an end of life. And when the NAS gets replaced, the drives inside the NAS get replaced as well. And you're talking about a few hundred bucks more for an enterprise, which quite honestly isn't even a thought. They're going to pay it. They're not going to think twice about it. So they probably had great success from an enterprise perspective, didn't see a drop in sales or even really many complaints about it. But the problem is that does not translate to home users. It does translate to home users that are buying their first NAS device. Meaning that if you have no hardware at all and you're comparing four bay NAS devices, even with the premium for the Synology in the first place, because they're more expensive than other NAS devices, and you now add in the premium for the hard drives, there's a chance it's probably still the best four bay NAS device that you can buy. So now you can go and buy anything else you want. It's going to be more powerful. It's going to be cheaper you'll be able to use any drive you want. And the 925 with Synology drives will probably still be the best device for that category of buyers. So with that all in mind, this really only impacts existing NAS owners. And I say NAS because if you have a NAS, you probably have hard drives that you already bought that you'd want to use. And as of right now, that might not be possible. So for me, if hard drives are still running and don't have smart errors, I am using them. So this hurts existing users with existing hardware. And for the most part, brand new users are far less impacted. 
You can dislike it, and I do too. But it's going to be far less of a problem for those types of users than you and I. So let's circle back to the first two questions I asked at the beginning of the video, and I'll give you my answer to it. If Synology certifies all third-party NAS drives that will function well in a NAS device, even within, let's say, six months, this is a short-term annoyance. If they're very strict and only certify some NAS drives, they're going to go from leaders in this space to an afterthought in the prosumer mind, because using myself as an example, I couldn't buy a device if my existing drives don't work. I'm not looking to spend thousands of dollars when I can spend hundreds of dollars, and I think that will eventually catch up to them in the long run, but not in the short run. So in my opinion, Synology should be approving types of drives because as of right now, they've ruled out all other brands of drives if the leaks are true. Now, this doesn't mean it's going to stay this way forever. But as of right now, that's exactly what it means. So I guess if you believe that firmware is the leading cause of problems, then this might make sense. But that's a scary problem to try and solve because firmware changes. And third parties aren't going to develop firmware with Synology exclusively in mind. So unfortunately, if firmware will not be taken into consideration, this makes no sense. It would actually be better for them to come out and say that no third-party drives are supported anymore because then from a firmware reasoning perspective, it would at least make sense. But when you look at the fact that they don't make their own drives, upgrading from an existing Synology to a new Synology completely bypasses the problem they're trying to solve and firmware versions change, the reasons that are out there right now make absolutely no sense. So this is what I'll say. If the firmware is the problem and they need control over it, double down and ban all third-party drives and don't allow migrations. This would be a unified front where they're saying that their customizations are designed for their operating system and to provide the best data integrity possible, this is the best solution. Then package Synology hard drives with Synology NAS devices, which will hopefully bring down the price because you're buying an all-in-one unit in bulk, if that makes sense. But seriously, you might not like it and I might not like it, but if they're making a change that they believe improves their product offering, then do it, but stand strong and have a unified front. You're not allowed to use anything but Synology branded drives because we have special firmware that we designed for our NAS devices and this will provide the best overall solution. Nobody can argue that. We can dislike it, but nobody can argue it. But don't use this current half-baked many ways to possibly get around it. You might be able to use your drives. You might not. We'll see. Don't do that. Stand strong and ban all third-party drives. Again, I would disagree with that as a consumer, but there aren't really any holes in that stance. From these unofficial leaks, there are too many holes. Close them up and we'll reassess. What do you think? Do you agree with anything I just said or do you disagree with everything? Let me know in the comments and if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.